How to install a sectional garage door. Difficulty level, three hammers. This type of door takes up less space under the ceiling when it is opened and is usually power assisted. This is a good way of saving space and improving thermal insulation. Make sure you follow the installation instructions that come with your door. You will need a sectional garage door and its electric motor kit. You will also need wall plugs and screws suitable for the walls, as well as some blocks. You will need a tape measure, pencil, a spirit level, clamps, long battens, a hammer drill, and 8mm concrete drill bit, a 5mm metal drill bit, a ratchet socket set, a crosshead screwdriver, a slotted screwdriver or a cordless drill, Allen BTR keys, cutting pliers, adjustable pliers, and a hammer. You will need protective gloves. Standard or custom built. Measure the height and width of your opening to see if there is a standard model available for this size. Failing that, order one to fit these measurements. Remove all obstructions around the ceiling area and ensure there is enough headroom for the door frame and the motor unit. Assembly. Place the two vertical guide rails and the lintel cross member on the ground. Line everything up, then fit together, screwing the fixing brackets in place. Push the end caps onto each rail. Installation. Lift the frame and position it inside the opening. Secure the cross member with a clamp. Then put another on one of the uprights without over tightening. Remove the clamp from the cross member. Adjust the subframe inside the opening and fix it securely. Using a spirit level, check that the lintel cross member is horizontal. Use a block under the upright in question if there is any height differential. Then check each upright with the spirit level before fixing in place with a clamp. Measure the distance between the uprights by the lintel and ensure they are the same distance apart on the ground. Also check the two diagonals to ensure the subframe is square. Fixing the frame. Installing the frame. Fix the lintel in place in the center and at the ends using the correct wall plugs for the type of support. Place the screws in the vertical rails and tighten them. For screws behind the springs, just unclip the springs and tighten the screws. Once everything is in place, remove the clamps. The guide rails. Start by unscrewing the spring block to access the horizontal rail. To keep the assembly together while you put it in place, temporarily clamp a wooden batten to it. Connect the horizontal rail to the upper rail without tightening it fully. Check everything is level before tightening the screws. The rear rail. Push the supports onto the rear rail and screw in place. Then insert it into the horizontal sections. Do the same with the other side and tighten the screws. The ceiling brackets. Place each ceiling bracket into its support. Then against the horizontal rail. Screw in place without over tightening it. Mark the mounting points in the ceiling. Drill, insert wall plugs and fit the brackets into the ceiling using only the center screws for the moment. Do not fully tighten the screws. You can now remove the supporting battens. Squaring the horizontal frame. Ensure the horizontal frame is perfectly square as well as level. Place an extra screw into each right angle bracket and tighten. Tighten the rail brackets as well. The lower panel. Place the anti-intrusion device on the end of the caps. Position the first panel, center it, then check and adjust the level as necessary with a wedge. Then hold it in place with a clamp. Install the guide roller brackets on each side of the panel. 
assemble the cables on each side of the rollers and guide roller brackets. Insert the roller into the vertical rail, then fix the roller brackets onto the bottom of the door. The next panels. Put the next panel into position. Screw the top roller brackets to hold it in place and then the lower ones and join the panels together. Use the same technique with the other panels. The top panel. For the top panel, the rollers fit into the horizontal rails. Assemble the roller brackets. Join the panels together. Push on the rollers to adjust them. Then screw the panel in place. Leave a bit of play in the rail. Adjusting the tension may vary from one model to the next, and even from a standard model to a custom-made one. Refer to the instructions that come with your door. Adjusting the tension. Begin by raising the garage door and fix it in place with a clamp. Attach the bottom of the spring to the second or third notch. Lower the door until it is one meter from the ground. The door should be balanced. If the door drops, move the springs up a notch. If the door rises by itself, move the springs down a notch. Assemble the motor rail support. Mark the middle of the last door panel. Position the motor panel mounting plate and mark the drill holes. Drill slowly and then screw in place. Preparing the motor rail. In this particular model, the rail is made up of two parts linked by an extension piece. Assemble the rail head, which comprises the sprocket and the chain tensioner. Adjust the tension of the chain with a spanner. Assemble the rail onto the motor sprocket. Fit the assembly brackets and place the slider onto the rail. Bend the suspension bracket where indicated in the installation instructions. Fit to the slider. Fit the carriage onto the rail with its link arm. Installing the motor rail. Position the front of the motor rail at the lintel cross member. Center it with the mounting plate and attach it just above the lintel. Follow the manufacturer's instructions when fitting the rail. At the back, position the rail in the center of section. Mark and drill the holes. Attach the suspension brackets. Attach the sliding link arm onto the connector plate with a split pin. Opening Closing Blocking Stop Open the door by hand to identify the fully open position and install the blocking stop. Position the carriage onto its chain sprocket and clip it in place above. Programming Plug your motor into a power supply. You should provide a 2.5 amp supply protected by a 10 amp fuse with no more than 8 sockets on the ring main. Read the instructions to record the opening and closing sequence for the door, as well as to program the remote control. Installing this will take less than a day, freeing up available space in your garage, complete with mechanical opening. <laughs>